Ministers here, welcome to St Jude's. It's so great to see you. It's been a, a pretty rough year, but it's really great to be able to gather together and celebrate all that Christmas means. I'm so glad that you could join us. A uh, special welcome to you if you're visiting with us. It's great to have you here. Uh, you would have uh, hopefully received a little flyer. Uh, if you didn't, there's some out the back just telling you a little bit about uh, St Jude's and there's a QR code on there and I think you know what QR codes do now. Uh, that'll take you to our website where you can find out a little bit more and there's also a welcome pack you can pick up there. And also welcome to you if you're joining us online. It's great to have you with us this morning. Well, we're going to start our Christmas service by standing and singing our first carol, O Come, All You Faithful. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come, 
please take a seat and we're going to have our first Bible reading this morning from the book of Matthew, read by Monty. That's not Monty, is it? Hi, Floss. Announce yourself before creeping up on people I, like that. I didn't mean to scare you. Sorry, Floss. Oh, it's okay. It's good to see you. Hi, everyone. Hi. How have you been anyway, Floss? It's been almost a year since we've seen you. Oh, gosh, Alex. It's been a year. Oh, I haven't even finished decorating yet, and it's Christmas Day. You certainly oh. look a little bit strung out. Oh. Yeah. How has your year been anyway, Floss? Well, can I just say, it's been another really hard year. You know, I thought 2020 was bad, and then came 2021. Tell me about it. Oh, I will. Don't you worry. Alex, you know, I thought the COVID stuff was all over, and then it returned with a vengeance. And then I had to do online schooling again, and I fell behind in classes, and I couldn't even see my friend Barry. She lives so far away, and I got really sad. And, and oh my gosh, did you see the news this year, Alex? There were so many protests, it was so scary to watch. And then there's been all the climate change stuff, and just, well, no one seems to be doing anything. <sighs> It just feels a bit too much sometimes, mm, you know? Mm, it's been a pretty rough year, hasn't it? Yeah. And there's lots of stuff that needs fixing. So many things. But you know, I'm really excited today because it's Christmas and we get to celebrate the good news about Christmas. I love Christmas too. I get so excited about presents and food and decorations uh -huh, and uh -huh. presents and food uh -huh. and... Oh, I just said that. Um, oh, oh, you know what my favourite yeah. thing was this yeah. Christmas? Making gingerbread houses. See, I even took a photo to show you. Let, let, me, let me just have a look. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing, Floss. I know, right? Yeah, that's great. Ugh, so good. Now, I've got something even better than all those things about Christmas. Oh, putting yeah. up Christmas lights. Ah, uh, no. Um, or dressing up for a nativity play. Uh, no, but that's closer. Uh, not quite. There's something even, even better than food and decorations and presents and, and gingerbread houses. And it's the good news of Christmas that God's son was born, Jesus, who came down from heaven to be with us. Oh, well, I suppose that is pretty good. You know all those things that you mentioned before that made this year pretty hard? Yeah. Well, Jesus came to fix them up, all the messes in our world because of sin. Oh, like, like sickness? Yes, yep. And like angry people and the protests? Yep. And like the whole world suffering from climate change? Yeah, yeah, all of those things. And we're going to read for some Bible passages this morning, sing some carols that help us remember that Jesus came to fix everything up. The best thing about Christmas. That's right. But now guess what? We're going to sing another carol. So let me invite the band up. I love singing. That's right. We're going to sing together our next carol, the first Noel. Please stand.
Please grab a seat, and I think this time we will have our first Bible reading from the book of Matthew, read by Monty. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful, faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had a mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what, you, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you, you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will continue, will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home and his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. What's that? Well, Joseph listened to what Mm -hmm. the angel told him, and he did marry Mary. You know, that could have all gone so wrong. She Mm. could have been left out in the cold, all alone with a little baby. But it was all okay, because God intervened. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, Do you know, Floss, what I found pretty cool? Well, no, what? The names. The names? Yeah. You know, I think mine was cooler. Well, maybe. But names are pretty important, Floss. Uh, Sometimes names tell us lots about a person, like sometimes parents in some cultures will give their child a name to kind of indicate what sort of purpose, what sort of hopes and dreams they have for their child. I have an important name. Do you really? Yes. My name is Floss. And that's because... You like flossing. No, I don't even have any teeth, Alex. See? Look, I meant the dance move, you know, flossing. (laughs) I hope my kids are out there somewhere. (laughs) I mean, that's funny, but no. My name's Floss because I'm pink and fluffy like fairy floss. There you have it. That's a great name, a great example. Can you remember any names from the reading? Um, well, there was Mary and Joseph. Yep, Mary and Joseph. And Mary and Joseph. Uh, you already said that, Floss. Um, uh, the Lord. Yep, yep. Um, Im, 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 Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes, yes, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. That's one of the super important names in the reading. And uh, they, uh, God told uh, them to give that name Emmanuel to the baby that Mary was carrying. Oh, you know, Alex, if you wanted the names of the baby, you really should have specified. Oh, sorry, sorry about that, Floss. <laughs> now, do you remember what that name means? <gasps> yes. Yeah. God with us. That's right. This baby was no ordinary baby. It was conceived by the Holy Spirit, which just really means that God put the baby inside of Mary. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. Just hold up for a second. God put this baby inside Mary. Yes. Mind blown. (laughs) 
well, Floss, your mind is about to be blown even more because this baby was God with us. So Jesus was actually God come as a person, born as a baby. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. Wait, wait, wait. So, so the baby with the name God with us is actually God with us. Yes. <laughs> that was my mind exploding even more. I guess that I was just dodging the, you know, fragments. <laughs> and this baby grew up as a kid, as a teenager, uh, then grew into an adult and lived the life that we did. Uh, went through all the good things and the hard thing as well. So uh, Jesus understands what it's like to live like us and even understands some of the hard things that we've faced, particularly over the past couple of years. Because well, yeah. he's lived it too. Yeah, yeah, that's <gasps> right. Yeah. Oh, wait, why on earth would anyone want to do that? Well, that's the incredible thing. He not only came to be one of us to understand what life is like, he actually came to do something more, to fix all those bad things up. So like all that hard stuff we were talking yeah. about before, he was born as a baby and grew up to fix it all? He did, he did. And now, uh, in a little while, we're gonna hear a little bit more about that because God promised his people a long, long time ago through the prophet Isaiah that he was gonna come and he was gonna come and be born and fix everything up. But now we're actually gonna sing a song. So let me invite the band up and we're gonna sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Oh, another awesome carol. Yes, yep. Let's stand. Yeah. 
take a seat. And now we'll have our second reading this morning, read by Biff. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Isaiah, was king of Judah, King Rezin of Aram and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim. So the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, go out, you and your son Shear Jashub, to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the launderer's field. Say to him, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smouldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram and of the son of Remaliah. Aram, Ephraim, and Remaliah's son have plotted your ruin, saying, let us invade Judah, let us tear it apart and divide it among ourselves and make the son of Tabil king over it. Yet this is what the sovereign Lord says. It will not take place. It will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only Rezin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered. Sorry. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Remaliah's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz says, said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of the humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Hey, Floss. I'm not entirely sure what was going on in that story. There were so many big words. Mm. But you know what I did here? What's that? Emmanuel! Yes. That was the name in the passage. Did you hear it too? I sure did. Uh, we all heard it, I think. <laughs> now, cool. would you like me to help out just a little bit about what's going on in that passage? Oh, yes, please. Okay. Well, we, we're sort of rewinding back a couple of thousand years and there are God's people there and they've actually split into two countries. There's the north, northern kingdom, that's Israel, or you might have heard it as Ephraim, and then there's a southern kingdom called Judah. Oh, yeah. The, so the kingdom split apart. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, yeah. But it actually, actually got worse than that because in the passage that we're reading, the northern kingdom has kind of turned south to march against the southern kingdom to attack Judah. Oh, no! Yeah. And not only that, they were bringing other countries with them. <gasps> so they're, like, surrounded by enemies! Yeah, they were. And King Ahaz, who was the king of Judah, he's pretty freaked out. And so he go, wants to go to an even bigger country, Assyria, and ask them to help him out. The plot thickens. Yeah, it does. The plot really starts to thicken there. Well, the prophet Isaiah urged King Ahaz uh, not uh, to trust Assyria, but to trust God instead, because God had promised that he would save them. Oh, but with big, scary countries mm. surrounding them, does he trust God? That's a great question. 
Uh, sometimes our fears, plus I don't know about you, but it certainly happened in my life, sometimes our fears, instead of helping us turn towards God, they can turn us away from God as we try to solve our own problems. We mm. try and look for other things to solve them when really we should trust God to help us. Yeah. Oh, I mean, all the time. Mm. But does he trust God? No, nah, sadly, he doesn't. He doesn't trust God. Mm. But anyway, Isaiah says, look, God's going to send a sign anyway, and all those who do trust God, that's the sign that he's going to save them. A sign? Yeah. What sort of a sign? Like, like, you know, this one, the wrong way, go back sign. That's a really good sign, but that's not the sign. Oh, um, let me see what else I got down okay. here. <laughs> oh, here's one. This one, the U-turn sign. No, not the U-turn sign, is it? Not the U-turn sign. The sign's actually not a sign like that. The sign is actually a child. What? A, a child? How is anyone supposed to see a child as a sign? Well, uh, couldn't well, he make it more obvious? To be fair, he did clarify a little bit. He said this child would be born uh, to a virgin and his name would be... <gasps> Emmanuel! Yes, Emmanuel, that's right. <laughs> Alex... I am still struggling to see how all this relates to the Christmas story. Yeah. Well, I think now we've got a bit of background. If we go back to our first reading that we heard Monty read, I think Monty's going to come and read again in a little bit. I think we'll understand it a bit better. Okay, right after this next song. That's right. We're going to sing another song. So let me invite the band up and we're going to sing Angels We Have Heard On High.
Please take a seat and let's listen again to that reading from Matthew chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had a mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said, to, had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to do and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Alex! Alex! Yeah. I get it! You get it, do you? Jesus is the son! Yeah. He's the child called Emmanuel! That's right. Uh, God promised to send a sign uh, thousands of, ye of years ago through the prophet Isaiah to show that he hadn't forgotten his people. It shows that God hasn't forgotten the world. That's right, not just his people, but the whole world. Um, did you hear any other names for the baby in the passage? Ooh, I know this one, Jesus. That's right. And why do you reckon they gave him that name? Um, why? Well, if you notice in the reading, it says, I'll give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Wait a minute. Does this have anything to do with Jesus fixing everything? Yeah, yeah. That's because the name Jesus means God saves and he will save us from our... Sin! That's right. That's right. Exactly right. You see... We really need saving from our sin. Uh, sin is why the world's so messed up, right? Okay. Uh, sin isn't just when we, uh, you know, don't listen to our parents or we hit our brother or, or sister or, or lie or th those things are bad. But sin is much bigger than that. It's how, it's how the whole world isn't right. It's the things we uh, do to, that means that we hurt each other and the things that mean we don't look after the world properly. Oh, yeah. You mean like all that hard stuff I was talking about before, mm -hmm. like the COVID stuff, the protest stuff, and the angry people, yeah. and all the other awful things happening around the world are all because of sin? Yes, and Jesus is a sign that, of God saying, I care, I understand, but even more than that, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna fix all of this up. Whoa. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, can you help me with something, Floss? I reckon the kids understand what we're talking about, but the adults are a bit slow sometimes, so maybe we need to give another example to help them. What do you uh, reckon? Yes, I am at your service, sir. Right, that's what I like to hear. Now, pretend, Floss, that you're stuck in the mud. Excuse me? Just, just go with me, come on. Great, Help. great, this is great. Oh. Uh, now oh. I, I'm walking over to save you. This is so meta, a skit Help. within a skit. Help! Help! Help, Alex, save me! I'm stuck in mud! Floss, you look pretty stuck here, stuck in the mud. I am! Yeah. Get me out! Uh, it seems like you're pretty frustrated. I'm, I'm so sorry. Don't give me your sympathy! Don't just stand there! Get 
Okay, okay, just calm down. Why do you want me to get you out? Um, hello, I'm stuck. Uh, what good is someone caring if they don't even do anything? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Our world is actually stuck in sin like you're stuck in the mud, right? And we can't get ourselves out, but God cares so much. He not only understands, he not only came to be with us, he actually came to save us and fix everything up. What, what good would it be if God came, but he actually didn't come to save us? Not much, I guess. Yeah, not much indeed. God does understand and he does care, but he cares so much that he not only came to be with us, he came to save us. Oh, that's incredible. I'm so glad he actually did something. Yeah, yeah, we've got a great God. He's Emmanuel, God with us, but also Jesus, God saves. It's mm. amazing. You know, I think I'm going to go and think about this some more and I'll come back in a bit. Okay, you do that. You do that. Uh, I'm going to invite the band up and they're going to lead us in an item to help us reflect on the wonderful salvation that Jesus brings.
Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that we can be here today to celebrate Christmas and worship you. Thank you for your one and only son, Jesus, who helped lots of people and spread your word. Thank you that he died so our sins could be washed away. We thank you for our families and friends who we can celebrate and worship with. Please help us to stay safe and out of trouble over the holidays so we can have a wonderful time filled with happiness and good experiences. Please help us to stay connected with those who might be far away, old or new friends, family and others. Lord, help us to keep on praising your name and spreading the good news of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we continue in prayer, at the end of each section, I'll say the words, Lord, in your mercy, and I ask you to respond, hear our prayer. Lord God, help us as we remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the wisdom of the wise men. Let kindness come with every gift, and good desires with every greeting. May this Christmas morning make us happy to be your children, and may the Christmas evening bring us to rest with grateful thoughts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we pray for the world's nations and their governments. We ask for peace and understanding between all nations. We give thanks for our government and its leaders and for all those having authority over us. Help them to be men and women of integrity with an understanding of your principles, acting justly and righteously in all godliness and honesty. Give our leaders wise and understanding hearts. Sustain those who live right and blameless before you and keep them firm and strong in their beliefs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the churches of the world, their leaders and congregations as we enjoy freedom to worship. For those who are threatened by persecution and violence because of their Christian faith, May they be freed from fear and anxiety and strengthened in their courageous witness, and may peace come to their troubled lands. We pray especially for those who live in Bethlehem today, where Christians are reluctant to openly express their faith, where the church is persecuted and people live in difficult circumstances. Give them peace to be able to worship you this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, We thank you for being with us in life's trials. Draw us closer and teach us to trust you more each day. We pray for all those suffering the effects of COVID, those ill at home or in hospital. We pray for all who work in emergency and essential services who keep us safe. We pray for those today who are isolating as a result of a COVID test. We especially think of those today who are unable to meet with family and friends due to being unwell, in isolation, from border closures or for other reasons. Give them peace during these trials and a joyfulness in celebrating Jesus' birth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, in this season of giving and receiving, we so easily overlook your many gifts to us. Thank you for so many reasons to celebrate, our families and friends near and far, and your beautiful creation of our world. Teach us to take care of our family relationships, our friendships, and our world as we celebrate today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's close with the words of the Lord's Prayer on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hey, Floss. Alex, Mm. hey, you know how I was saying earlier how hard this year has been? All the lonely people and angry people and sick people and people even hurting our world. Mm. There's just a lot going on. Mm. And like, does God 
really care. Look, all those things are really hard and they're really rough, uh, but God does really care. On that first Christmas, he came to be with us and he's still with us by his Holy Spirit. And he not only came to be with us, he came to save us. And he actually did save us. And that's what we celebrate at Easter. And at Christmas, we celebrate the sign. That's right, we celebrate the sign. And you know what? Uh, Jesus promises that one day he's gonna come back again and he's gonna fix everything up for good. Ugh, for good. And, and cause he's come the first time and saved us from sin, we can trust he'll come the second time, come again. That's right, we can really trust that. Oh, woohoo! Joy to the world. Well, you actually just took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Funny that. We're gonna sing our, last, uh, our, our next and our last song, Joy to the World, where we celebrate the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you stand with us? It was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it good to see Floss, everyone? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Thanks, guys. It's been so great to see everyone. Hey, if there's anyone new or visiting here today, Alex, um, and, and like say they wanted to find out more, what would they do? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> I ask uh, great questions. You do, you really do. Uh, now, you would have got a, a little fly that, we, that you came in with and there's a QR code, you can scan that, find out more at our website. You can also connect uh, with a little form that you, that you can fill out. There's also a welcome pack you can grab from the table out there. 
Uh, one of the things uh, that we're running uh, in February is a Christianity Explored course. So if you want to uh, check out more about Jesus or dig a bit deeper into finding out about the Christian faith uh, through the Gospel of Mark, you can do that. Uh, just again, get on the website and you can uh, express your interest uh, if you would like to, and we'll contact you uh, when we finalise a date. Uh, and as well as that, uh, we're here tomorrow and every Sunday at 10 a.m. Tomorrow? Oh my goodness. Gold star for whoever comes back tomorrow. Indeed, gold star. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. It's been great to see you. Merry Remember, Christmas. Remember, yeah. God's with us and Jesus saves us. Thanks, Floss. See you next time. Merry Christmas. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>